welcome everybody to another episode of Blade Masters Forge. Yeah, hey everybody, what's going on? Hey, Car Dreamer here, obviously. Yeah. yeah, and Days, of course. Yep, haven't left this house no matter where you're listening, still yeah. living. <laughs> <laughs> Monster Hunter cosplay every night. It's true. I mean, it cost me nothing to have a big sword. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so this is going to be part two of our monster hunter discussion um we've decided we're going to kind of change the title or premise where we we learned last time that we're not going to focus on one thing yeah it was supposed <laughs> no to be just happening what, and it's not we we decided our premise was supposed to be just what have we learned in all this time and it's just, it's not just learning it's what have we experienced in this whole time so yeah and and yeah and the two things and a whole lot else just go hand in hand like it's one of those things with Monster Hunter being as elaborate as it is, you really can't just talk about one little string when there are billions of strings all intertwined, and it's just a spectacular mess. It's so true. So with that said, come along with us as we bask in the glory, glory of death. Glory of death. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Even though nothing is dying this episode, we will reminisce of past death and still take joy in it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. man so okay why don't we so we know we covered like jewels general <laughs> combat we learned about the armor sets we talked about so much and yet i mean i don't know if you've experienced anything more to talk about like in the last because i mean we're not dumb you've got like three thousand more hours in just since <laughs> the last episode yeah and it's funny because i don't even remember what the hell we talked about last time because it's all <laughs> just a, a drunken blur <laughs> I thought the drinking started after the uh, camera went down. <laughs> you know what I'm well, saying? Yeah, true. <laughs> but, uh, well, I know for me, like, I'm still, just in the short time I've played, I'm still ex having new experiences because I just haven't covered. I, I just can't get to everything this game offers, so I love that there's still more. Um, as far as world goes, I've invest I finally did the Safi Jiva uh siege and that's been a lot of fun it's a very unique experience with the weapons mm -hmm. because you you out of you, you could end up if you successfully do it with depending on how many people are doing the siege um and this is teams four. you can have like an, any number of teams of four uh, or whatever teams going in and doing the siege at the same time and it's all a cumulative point total pool and the siege just ends the, with the first team who kills them Cool. Now, obviously, you get to finish out the run you're going, but there won't be any more. And everybody's cumulative points adds to a, a total point level for rewards. And obviously, the longer you can keep going, whatever, or the more teams, the larger the pool, the better the rewards. <clears throat> and um, me and my brother were doing this. So we got – apparently, the weapons – they all look the same as far as, like, all the charge blades look the same. All the insect blades look the same. All the dual mm -hmm. blades look the same. The only real difference is the, st the, the stats are slightly t uh, tweaked, but what it is is like there's a wep a version of a weapon like there's a charge blade for every ailment you, or an, an element you can inflict. So I have I've already got like there's a thunder, there's a dragon, there's a paralysis, there's a sleep, there's a blast, there's I mean there's one for everything. It was really neat is that they each have a, a base awakened skill that you can invest materials into and points into mm -hmm. which you can earn either by beating the raid or just bringing the weapon along at, it lets you uh, boost its potential nice and you can customize up to like four or five i think five different skills on the one weapon so you can have it boost your defense in one slot and he, it's just like it's mind-boggling it's it's because it's not only can you have like a defense booster a health booster whatever there's up to five or six ranks on him per skill so i can have a level six now you can only have one that's maxed like level six or something mm -hmm. but all the rest can go up to their max tier or their second to the next tier i should say like 
And then what's neat is you can have a special slot where you can actually unlock where it counts as part of the armor bonus set. So, like, if you need three pieces to get this skill, but you only want two of that... So I'm looking at doing a Silver Rathalos thing. So let's say it requires three armor pieces for me to activate a certain skill on Silver Rathalos, the armor. I can make it where the, the weapon counts as part of the armor. That's awesome. So it's just, like, been really neat where I can... I can have, like, five different Thunder weapons from this thing, and none of them will be the same... Be, based on how I decide I want to customize it. So it's really yeah. it's a really neat experience with that. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. But uh I know you're just killing things. Like that's <laughs> Yeah, I'm more or less just questing day in day out. <laughs> just like crushing as many quests and hitting up tons of multiplayer and just popping in here and there and just laying waste. Well, I saw you've been hitting up Fatalis. Is yeah. that the is that the end game end game in general monster? Um well it's like G four, so it's pretty much like you don't you don't see it anywhere else until G four, uh, as far as I know. Um but yeah, there's like the old Fatalis, the black one, and the crimson. Uh, I think those are the only three uh in general anyway. So yeah, I've been enjoying those quite a bit. The the armor and the weapons are pretty sweet from what I've looked at anyway. Um, and it's just a blast because it's one of those hunts where you're not roaming around like a different uh, landscape from one zone to the next. It's all in just like a specific, like a single room. And you've got things like the cannons and ballista and like the dragonator, uh, which is just like these two huge harpoons that come out of the wall. If you lure the dragon up against the wall um and like there's just crazy strong attacks that they do so it's just been a blast hitting that up with people nice yeah i was just curious if that was like the ultimate monster because i know with world they just introduced fatalis and he is the end game there is going to be nothing more powerful than him coming there's yeah there's no gear more powerful coming it's just i mean like he is it but there's only the one version it's just a normal i think the just the Black Bay Tal- uh, Okay. Fatalis. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, as far as I know, there's nothing beyond Fatalis in terms of, like, power, like, and HP and that kind of thing. But at the same time, it still sort of fits within the same bracket of uh, that other, uh, like, G4 event quest monsters have. Like, so in that sense, like, you can still take one out just as quickly as other things, depending on what you're doing. But I think... In general, it's viewed as like, oh, yeah, like the big final strongest whatever, like ultra challenging monsters. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> so I know like part of it was just the evolution of our experience in the game. And like... so I mentioned I was trying to do some things with Silver Rathalos armor. And it's just mm-hmm. like, I know these are all common things to people, but it's one thing to know of its existence in, in a totally different thing when you finally get to the point of doing it yeah and mixing and matching armor sets really wasn't what i was doing in the game i know world encourages it Mm -hmm. and i've mixed between the different versions of a set like i'll mix from a and b of the same monster but i've never mixed outside the different monsters okay and that's the that's what i'm actually going to end up doing for this set so it's really blowing my mind and like how much potential there is for mixing that because it's now it's not only in my mixing and matching armor pieces to maximize their their armor sets and get a an, a focused set of skills but then i gotta now focus my gems on complementing those skills so it's absolutely. like absolutely it's just a matter of it's just now i've got all sorts of things that i'm trying to balance a tweak and i'm just used to tr- doing that with the gems in one set of armor so it's kind of like holy mm-hmm. crap and if i pull this off how many more frick all these other different armors i've got to pull off i i can look at and do and it's just like it just blows my mind how in depth you can get with the game and yet still no, be nowhere near the bottom. I mean, there's only a finite amount of monsters, and yet the potential seems endless. Yeah, totally. When you, and that's the thing too. Like, um, it wasn't until 
I think a little over a week ago, whatever day it was that I started Heavy Bowgun a little bit, that was the first time ever putting together a mixed set of armor. Up until that point, I would always just do like full set um, of just like the straight one monster and nothing deviating from that, which I still do to this day um, for like my dual blades. Like that's just how I love going into battle. Um, but at the same time, I do realize that there's huge potential for uh, tweaking skills or maximizing exciting thing about just the potential for this or that. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm actually surprised because I always was under the impression General did not encourage the mixing of armor sets. So you're you're kind of like activating Dace God mode here and saying, screw that, I'll make it work. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, I was really under the impression that they encourage you to use a full set of armor. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. Like, that's just what I automatically did because, yeah, I think just in terms of, generally speaking, if you're going for a specific one or two skills and you just happen to see that that's on this helmet, well, obviously it's going to be on the rest of those pieces of armor. So if you want to just boost all of that to a, an active state or higher, um, then that would be one way to go. But in terms of getting more skills at your disposal, then that's where mixing and gems and all that kind of stuff will definitely come into play. How has been the gem ex experience? Like, where are you finding the gems at? How have you... <clears throat> Um, well, the main way that I've been, well, I've actually been doing a little bit of farming lately, and there's a specific quest. It's, I'm, as far as I know, it's like the best and fastest way to farm, uh, the jewels or whatever, the decorations, um, or the, the talismans, I mean, um, because that's, yeah, the gems are literally, you just... Okay, I think I'm. I want to explain. Like, gems are something from monsters. And then you have decorations, and it's the decorations that have the skills, and you just craft those from the dude. So that's nothing special. Uh, but the talismans are what you really want to be going after because that's anywhere from one to three slots for your decorations, and those things can have depending on like the uh, just like the the rank of the talisman. You can have. Um, like plus seven or plus 11 for one skill and like plus seven for another skill. Uh, sometimes you'll have negative, uh, but if those don't add up to enough, then it doesn't matter anyway because you're just going after the things you want. Um, so anyway, getting back to what I was saying about there being one method, there's like this uh, Bracadios quest. So typically we do heavy bow gun where we go in and about 30 seconds later, 40 seconds later, the Bracadios is already toast. And you get anywhere from 30 to 40 uh, talismans. Um, Sheesh. Yeah, and compare that to, like, when I solo a quest on my own, you might get anywhere from one to, like, three t uh, talismans. Sometimes I've had ones where I do get, like, 11, but that's pretty high. But it's it's the most insane way to just get insane, insane amounts of uh, talismans very, very quickly. And the ones that you're not going to use, you can sell them for like two grand a piece, 1,000 a piece, like whatever. So you get a huge amount of money as well. Dude, I yeah, need to get it's, back into gentle. <laughs> oh, dude, man, it's so good. It is so good. That is awesome. Yeah. I... So I know Gen All has like an insane amount of quests mm -hmm. between the Palico ones, the optional ones, the DLC ones, the story ones. I mean, they yeah. the quests are insane. Um, I don't think there's a lot in World, but it's not. I don't. I I think Gen All has a beat a little. Okay. And but I found like. I don't even have to be on a quest to constantly be working on things, and it's it's part of, like, I'm still overwhelmed by how much there is to do. I haven't even done the quest that upgrade all my stuff yet, mm -hmm. um, and yet there's an area called the Guiding Lands, which is kind of the end game area, 
which I was t- uh, I think I was telling you and Aud about it um, on our catch up session yeah, that we did. Totally. And it was just where it's all the biomes combined and every almost every monster can be pretty much found there. In fact, I had a really awesome experience where for the very first time since the Oda Garen, and that was just a cutscene, um, like a, a monster and its and its variants were actually in the same locale. Like, Wild. Say, it was so cool. Like I, I was just going there, and where it basically is seamless. You're really there to farm, the harvesting stuff. You you need a a general set. Not that you can't go back to a camp, but you really kind of want to go in with a general set for that's all around good for no matter what monster you fight because constantly going back to camp and switching out for a specific set just to get one monster is just not really practical. Yeah. So, and I happen to see, there was an Anjanath on the on the, um, in the area after I just killed a few other monsters. I say, okay, I'll get him next. And I go there, and it was so cool, like, he's feeding, and then there's the Folger, his, the newer version that they did, the very uh, the Folger engine app, and they're and he's eating another mine. They're just in the room, and they're kind of just like roaring at each other, but not like violently, not getting ready to turf war or anything. They're just kind of there, and they were defending one another. And it was like, man, it was just so cool to see them together. Like I, I didn't know how variants would the yeah the variants were going to work from one opposed to the other, but it was really neat. And I'm just focused on the regular engine app, not even trying to get the Folger. And I, you know, the Folger would not leave me alone for a while, so I had to sit there and run between them. So when the Folger attacked, he'd hit the regular engine app. <laughs> it was just really cool. And all the while, you're just leveling up the areas because as you do more investigations and clues and kill more monsters, you're leveling up the area and therefore unlocking more monsters to show up in that area, and which therefore can lead to where you can actually – do things to lure out specific monsters that you might want to hunt. You can like it's just all this manipulation of the environment, the elements, and then you can lure out specific what you want for farming. It's it was just so crazy, and just getting used to that is wild. Because I had it unlocked for the longest time, but I wasn't going there until now. Mm-hmm. Man, that's so, so good. I'm like I'm hoping Rise has a fraction of these things. Oh man. I, yeah, I'm very, very interested in seeing what they do with that and just trusting they pour an overabundance of content. Because I think that's going to be a game that once it's here, people are just going to want to play and play and keep having things to do. I'm really curious if this is going to be... Once Rise comes out, like, I'm really anxious to see if this is going to be, like, the gen ult killer for you. Like, there's no going back once you get the Rise, so to speak. I'm really yeah. curious. It, it'll be interesting to see because I've been thinking about that, too. And there's just as much likelihood that, like, I'll play Rise and then I'll come back to gen ult and be like, yeah, this is what I want to be doing. There are – see, and that's actually what I'm curious about because – there's especially for you there's really a distinct gameplay like right yeah. now we have the two the dual gameplay um uh monster hunter gamers where you've got world and you've got gentle mm-hmm. and i know you've only been able to go well like you and i for me i'm kind of more biased towards not more i am more biased towards world just because i love a lot of the different elements more and the streamlining of it and not that i don't appreciate and enjoy gen ult but Mm -hmm. i don't know if it's because world i feel is just better or if it's just because it's my first game so i'm kind of biased towards it so i'm curious to see if that's going to be the thing for you yeah (laughs) for sure like I mean, but it's going to be interesting. Are you going to be, are you, because it's your first, are you going to be hooked on the old way of fighting? Or are you going to be like, are you, can you get behind the more streamlined thing? You'd be like, screw this. If I'm not cycling through 20 potions, get, yeah. it's not worth it. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's interesting because my first thought when I saw the trailer was like, wow, like this is essentially Breath of the Wild except Monster Hunter. So right there i'm sold on however the game wants to deliver things i like it does not matter to me i will lap it up so if it's anything like world i'm totally on board because i even though i haven't played world i'm 
really into the idea of streamlining and just things being fluid and the fact that it's open world and from what we've seen in the trailer like it just looks like you can do so many amazing cool things and just exploration like here's the thing too like with me wanting to always just have this very immersive experience the fact that like you cannot get that in general it's like okay you choose a quest you know exactly what the layout is going to be like you're just roaming around the same rooms with this it's like you can just depending on how big they make the overall world of course you can just roam around ignoring monsters ignoring like the purpose of a quest or whatever however it's going to be laid out you can just ignore all that and you can just explore like when i started breath of the wild for instance, um, I couldn't tell you how many tens upon tens upon tens upon tens of hours that I just explored at the start of the game. I did nothing story-related. I ignored all of that. I literally just roamed the land for so, so long. And I can easily see myself having a mix of that because um, like, I don't play open-world games very often, so when I do jump into something like that, it's like wow like i don't even care about doing anything i just want to run around and see things so i i know i'm going to be really really into it and the fact that big monsters can show up it's like wow like i'm just so stoked so i think i'll i think it'll be right up there with gen alt i i have a funny feeling that'll be the case and i'm kind of hoping i can push myself to get to the fatalist point in world prior to rise coming out because once i reach that point not that there won't be still stuff to do i feel i can tone it back and then mm -hmm. i can put more focus on the rise i don't want i don't want rise to be just another game that i i sample and then go back to world yeah never get to which i don't think it will i mean but then again i still have Monster Hunter 3 sitting here. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's, well, that's um, the oh, go ahead. No, I. It's just like they're such massive undertakings. It's hard to think of trying to do two Monster Hunter games at a go. Yeah, and that's what I want to mention. Like, um, even before I knew about Rise, there was a part of me that was like, okay, this time in like this current third phase of being into Gen Alt, this time I really want to stick with it and push through as much if not like everything uh that's in the game um so i like yeah the last few nights and stuff i've been cleaning up prowler quests as much as those are just so useless um and so tedious to deal with like i've just been pushing through all that kind of stuff like i'll throw in a few normal quests here and there just so that like i keep my sanity more or less but uh <laughs> yeah um <laughs> Yeah, this time there's just this major drive to say like okay, like let's just push to the end and like and that way and then when I did find out about Rise it was like now there's even more reason to clean up as much of this game as possible because in the event that Rise is like wow, I've got to play this all day every day and like not touch anything else, there's nothing left to do in Gen Alt anyway, so like other than just playing multiplayer with people and just doing what I want. But uh yeah, at the very least, I want to get as much out of the way as possible. Um, so, yeah, it's just great and, yeah, to have been plowing through all this. I feel like if Rise really does take over that, like, I could just see you going on there, like, the, you, you play Rise for, like, two hours. You're like, you know what? Go on limited run. Go on to get, cancel, 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 because I'm not playing anything else. Yeah. Just cancel everything. <laughs> <laughs> Limited Rudd's like, but he was our biggest buyer. What yeah. happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And this is just doubly fascinating to me because when you and I met and went with Ash and you you were really, other than re like going back old school, just memories of growing up, prior to the whole indie scene like you you're a hard you are a hardcore steady i don't really care for triple a's i want indie games yeah. and like here you are your biggest played game is a triple a title yeah which isn't amazing and not even because it's a triple a like if this had been an indie project that just happened to be as 
great as Gen Alt is, like, that's what I would have gone with. Like, to me, it's never about, like, who made it, as long as it's just, yeah, amazing. And I, No, and I get that, but at the same time, something on the, the scope of these games, I yeah. can't see an indie developer... Oh, yeah, for it. sure, yeah, definitely not. The, ...the time or money to do it. Mm-hmm. Not that they wouldn't have a desire, but... Yeah. So, but I, I just thought it was interesting, like, Man, Triple A got dace. Like, like yeah. you gotta just just wrap your mind around that. Like, there, there's nothing left to live to see. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just mm-hmm. it's the end of an era. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's pretty remarkable because you think about like Triple A versus and the fact that I'm almost as many hours into an indie. Uh, we know which one, Dead Cells. That it's... speaks volumes for. And that's the thing too, like the the comparison. I've mentioned this before. Like, you've got to realize how much content is in Generations Ultimate. Compare that to Dead Cells, where you're pretty much doing the same. Like, even though it's procedurally generated and blah blah blah, it's the same run time and time again. So yeah, you can take different routes, but it's technically the same run every single time. So the fact that I've done Dead Cells almost as many hundreds of hours as Generations Ultimate with how little content Dead Cells has compared to Gen, uh, Gen Alt. Like, that, to me, is even more mind-blowing. Because if you think about it, if Dead Cells had as much content as Gen Alt did, think of how many thousands of hours I would already be into at this point. I would never have put that game down yet. So that's definitely something to think about. Like, it's easy to sink so much more time into Gen Alt because... Like a single quest takes 30 minutes or 40 minutes or 50 minutes sometimes. And then you think about the sheer amount of questing and repetitive questing. Like you don't just get a full set of armor and the dual blades and all the upgrades from one hunt against one monster. Right. It's like you've got to be like, I'm honestly still blown away by just how much there is to play in Generations Ultimate. It's just unreal. It's. Yeah, that, and it's amazing. Like aside from the Palico stuff in general, like you never, or I have never felt like doing the same quest. It really didn't feel like a grind. Or didn't oh feel yeah, like exactly. Because there, even though you're doing the same mission, where obviously the air, the monster you're fighting doesn't change, the monster's moveset doesn't change. Nothing's changed except everything's changed because the monster. Even though he's got the same moveset, doesn't mean he's going to react the same. Yeah, and doesn't and every, mean he's going to go to the same places and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, right, exactly. And it's like, it's, and when you're doing multiplayer, then it's even more like, well, I who's going to be its next target and when? Mm-hmm. You never know when to go on the defense, when to go on the offense. It, like, yep. It's. Uh, and who's going to faint? And how many people are going to faint until. Oh, well, I'm going like, to faint. But. <laughs> <laughs> but just like the idea that like you can be playing a certain way but then was so, like just for instance uh, last night we were doing a, a g4 a cantor and everybody around me was fainting and then suddenly it's like wow we have one faint left and then we're screwed and it's just like suddenly you just shift into this mode of like oh man like we cannot even like you've more or less got to be sneaking around the monster at that point. You can't just run up to it and go crazy. Like you've got to suddenly be playing so much more carefully. So like, yeah, there are just so many things and it's never the same fight, even though you're going into the same quest. I'm like, it just, no, you're, you're, it's so true. And like, and it's funny because, like, the, if they do the monster right, and Geno definitely has some of their monsters that do it, and World's done it with even, like, they've done it even with monsters now that you look back and you just laugh at. But they they have just their presentation upon first meeting them or their first attempt. They're so intimidating. Like, it, they can really cower you into playing in a totally different way that yeah. actually doesn't work. Totally, and I I love the fact that it can invoke this lived in like you feel like you're there because you're reacting so many different ways to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I think about some of the the hunts where I've I've gone in, and the first thing that happens is like you just get blown up, 
and you like in two seconds you have like a sliver of health and you're just like retreating out of the zone because you're like what the hell was that like what kind of start was that and so you're already burning through healing items and then you're going in just with this idea of like oh man like this is just going to be insane so i love the way that's they set some of these things up no i yeah and that's actually a good thing to talk like the next thing that I've evolved with with my gameplay is like learning the windows of when you oh, can yeah. and can't do something. Mm-hmm. So I knew you could like clutch claw an enemy's face and steer him into a wall and knock him over, but I never knew when you could. And But sometimes I would try it and it wouldn't work. And I never knew like what to read on a monster when they were good. But I would always hear a car would go like, okay, and his friends go like, okay, so the monster's ready to be mounted. The monster's ready to be knocked into water. And I asked him, like, how do you know? Like, is there something that tell, that's a telltale when these monsters? And he explained to me, so on your compass, there's a, there's an eye symbol over the monster in world. And it can change from white means they're completely oblivious to you. Yellow means they're alert. And red means they're pretty much enraged. Yeah. And yellow, yellow and red is more or less when you're, being targeted and you're you know you're you're fighting it but he's like yeah as long as it's yellow you can do it if it's red they're enraged you can't do it i was like and that totally saved me some trouble like because if you you try to do it and you completely fail you're going to take a a beating no yeah so already i've learned to save myself from getting hit and hurt then um every time you encounter a monster and they're ready to go on the attack they roar at you which can stun you from moving and so forth so there's monsters in level like uh, I was doing the a variant called the Frostfang Barrier for a while just to get t- farm in for tickets, nice. and I managed to I knew exactly what camp to go to, how where he was going to be located. I knew I got all set up, and I was able to time it where I could have made pretty much skip him I, or force it to skip that first roar, the introductory roar. Nice. If I was fast enough, I could go in, clutch his face immediately steer him into the wall because it's a narrow little walkway and, and run him into it before he could do anything. That's awesome. So it was such an empowering feeling. Like, that's right. I'm the hunter, bitch. Yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> so part of the language, but I'm like, like, it felt so good to like do these little things. So now it's kind of like, obviously not every setup is going to be ideal to do that for every monster, mm-hmm. but it's definitely got me more and more now looking for those type of openings where if I can skip the war or skip the roar, I'm skipping a stun phase. I'm skipping any damage I can take and immediately going on the offense and putting them in a state where if I'm playing with other people and they're just as proficient, man, that's three other people now who are going to wail away on them. Yeah, and that makes a huge, huge difference. It really does. I'm absolutely, like, I'm just loving how much depth. I, that's all it is. It's just constant. This is a three-hour discussion of how much we love the depth. That's yeah. It. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, and honestly, I don't. It's funny because we really thought we were going to talk forever, but I kind of think like we reached a plateau and what to talk about. And yeah, and that was another thing you brought up, like talk about the different plateaus. Or, like, do we feel like we leveled off? Gentle, I feel like there's more times where you you plateau until you finally just do something enough where you can unlock the next. Mm-hmm gear or whatever whereas world like i never felt like i plateaued i always feel like i'm steadily going uphill like i never felt like where there's a downhill now there's nothing to do whatever it's and i granted part of that is because i've taken breaks to do other stuff or whatever or i just got distracted and and didn't go back but i've never had the plateau with monster hunter world it's been a steady uphill gosh there's so much more to achieve so much more to reach and Mm -hmm. i'm i've loved it yeah and that's the thing that I that I love whenever I hear about like just all the customizing you can do in World because obviously Gen General doesn't have that for the room or anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, and I think w- one thing I d- remember noticing about Gen Alt is like the game always got better. Like when you finished low rank and you got into high rank, you were starting to see monsters you had never seen before, and it was always just becoming better and better and more challenging and things like that, which I really love. So, like, I think the times where I've actually plateaued were either 
burning out in a sense or just getting to a point where like you had accomplished something you wanted to like something big that you wanted to to achieve and then after that it was kind of like oh well i'm not really interested in doing anything else. i'm not going after this armor or that armor i have what i want so you kind of like stop for a while um but at the same time i think another side of it too was just the lack of knowledge that I had at those different points in time. Like I've talked about uh, like power or attack and defense stacking and not realizing stuff like that. And so monsters that seemed like they were just way too strong or just had way too much health for me to solo. I, I now realize that I can do those things. So like, for instance, another thing I just learned two nights ago was that uh, the gourmet fish so that, like when you get hit by a monster, let's say you're fighting a hyper monster and you get a huge hit that knocks your health down halfway. But of course that's only like the red bar. Like it goes from green to red. So what I learned is that the gourmet fish restores that red bar all the way back to what it was. So this whole time for almost 600 hours, what I've been doing is using my precious healing items every single quest. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of quests to heal up the red bar and then beyond to like fill it up like for the remaining that is actually totally gone. But what I could have been doing this whole time is just eating a single fish and then a single like herb or potion and be topped up completely as opposed to like, Oh man, I just took a big hit. I've got to use two mega potions and a herb just to get all the way up there. So when I think about the sheer amount of potions I've put away, literally, just to stay on top of my health when there's something as simple as eating this gourmet fish. It's like, what? Like, it's just one of those things like that dras- that dramatically changes how I will play from now on. And just being more, uh, just preserving more of my healing items, which means you can like potentially last longer because there have been so many hunts where it's like, I've completely exhausted everything I've brought with me. And it's like, wow, I have a like an eighth of my health left. And you're in that situation where it's like you have to go and hit the monster, but you don't even really want to afford getting close to it because you know like if I take a single hit, it's I'm I'm toast. And that's the end of the quest. So that's just one little example of something where it's like, wow, that's so basic. And how am I only finding out about it almost six hundred hours into the game? Like what? I know it's like it's almost fush like it's funny you laugh but at the same time you're like yeah like, when wow you find, when you find something that simplistic that far into a game invested wise you're kind of like you know what I'm done <laughs> like why it's like why why obviously I'm too much of a noob but I mean obviously you don't finish or don't quit I mean but well, I always finish you know, oh I know <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're living here. <laughs> uh, makes it easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. But um, yeah. So I, I mean, again, I, yeah, I've had the same thing where it's kind of like all this time I can be doing this, like the clutch claw. I I really didn't know much about on how to use a, since Iceborne's induction because I just didn't do it. Um, there are items I still don't quite mess with in world that I'm trying to look into more. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there's a shortcut wheel that lets you you can carry items with you and keep craft, but I don't I don't use all that. Yeah, and it's just a matter of really needing to study the game and and I'm inching along where some people go mile you know they're 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 skipping miles and I'm inching along and I don't know I I don't it's a catch 22 you can make better progress quicker if you were able to take miles along but then i feel like i would miss a lot doing that i don't think i'd have the experiences i've had if i if i wasn't inching along yeah i i feel the same way like like i do not regret at all like the the flow and the pace that i've had with gen old because it's just meant for this incredible unraveling of realizations along the way and just how to uh, and I think this ties into just what keeps me motivated 
or any given player, like the things that keep you pushing further and further instead of just giving up, like you learn these things and you're like, wow, the potential is huge to just, like you realize in some ways that you can be so much better than you have been playing. Uh, and that's really inspiring. Uh, no, yeah, I agree. And I, and I know Gentle is a little lacking on one thing that keeps me coming back. And it's sad because I've noticed – I'm not a huge multiplayer fan. I really don't want to play with randoms, although this yeah. game makes it in such a way that it, it doesn't bother me per se. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas like if it was Call of Duty or something, I, I don't want to deal with that. But th- th- this game is actually pretty good with it. You don't have to interact with them. For the most part, people are decent. Sure, people make mistakes, and I'm not perfect either. Um, it's well-balanced how the multiplayer can and does work. But I still would always prefer to play with, with good friends. Mm-hmm. And at least when it came to, like, little CDs a little more open. My brother can be, like, really picky with what he wants to do because he's more like, Look, I just want to get done and make progress. And I'm like, this is not the game where you, you just go in, progress, beat it, done. It, you, it, that's really not what the game is about. Yeah. Um, like, we were playing together for a while, but then he wanted to do – constantly just farm Sappy Jiva, which is ironic because he really didn't want to. Um, but we got to the point of experimenting with upgrading, and I'm like, I got something. That's fine. But I'm one of those – the game isn't just about killing the next monster – Mm-hmm. I like the layered armor stuff in in the game because you can like there's a a ton of layered armors to get in the game. There's a ton of there's a decent amount of event stuff you can get as well. And I kind of with the events because they're limited time, I kind of want to focus on doing those first. For sure. Um, but at the same time, it's like I I kind of try to balance it out. I want to do a little of this, little of that, little of this, and get it done. Like, uh, I want to – I'm not going to sit there and try to hit up 50 different event quests. If I'm going for a particular event weapon, I want to do everything to to get it up to its max state, and then I'm done. Yeah. Um, And he's kind of like, no, I don't want to. And it kind of sucks that some people are kind of just wanting to get from point A to point B because I feel like you're missing so much of the game, Mm -hmm. which is really where I was going with this. It's just there's something about having fun collecting different things especially with the um with world having the the room you can decorate uh, and level up and earn earn and do so much with customization wise and make it like feel like this is your part of the world and with the endemic life and and the the layered armor and going out getting all these pieces and and doing this and that and i'm kind of like man i'm having fun just because some of the gear even if you don't like the gear in its practical use to legit armor it looks amazing a lot of yeah. them look so awesome. So I'm like, I want the layer gear. I would love to switch between all this every now – like every so often I'll switch to a new suit. I'll switch to this. I'll switch that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change what gear I'm playing with. It just lets me have fun looking different. Mm-hmm. And they're like, eh, we don't want to do that. I don't like any – I'm like, you guys are boring. Like I really enjoy – when you get the right people to play with, the game is even more – like just more fa- uh, amazing, just bringing everybody together, and that's why I love playing with you and Akaru and and Ot and it, like you don't. It's like we didn't care what we were doing; it was just helping one another out, just having fun, killing the monsters, basking in the glory of death. People, yeah. So came from. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it's just if you're gonna go in think it with this mentality of rushing through it, you you're probably better off just not doing it. It's not that I want to discourage people from playing Monster Hunter. But at the same but, time, like, what's the point? Right. Like, if yeah. you just want to be done with the game, then <laughs> don't start it. <laughs> right. And it's it's funny because you don't have – it's going to at some point, if that's your mentality, you're you're going to have – then you are going to reach a plateau because you're going to have no choice but the, to grind out so you yep. can progress. Totally. Like, world, world locks certain – and I know Jen Elton's done it too. You can only advance 100 ranks so far – before you have to do certain things before you can unlock the cap and progress. Yep, so exactly like you're going to have to grind. So either go in with the uh, mentality of enjoying the grind and getting the different things that go along with it. Otherwise you're going to annoy yourself and frustrate yourself until you get to that next little step, just to plateau again. Yeah. Or the fact that when you do get to where you want to be, 
like the the whole journey has just been this miserable experience and that sounds like the kind of thing that would leave a, a sour taste in your mouth the fact because you've built up this idea of like oh i want to get here but then it's just this brutal struggle the whole way that you're not enjoying is that end goal really going to be so satisfying after just hundreds of hours of just yeah things you don't like or things you're complaining about or finding tedious exactly and like and and i get it too because we all see the trailer you know you can look at world and all the trailers every time they're introducing a new monster or when a new Monster Hunter game comes out, you're like, oh my, they should only showcase like one or two monsters. And you're like, oh my gosh, it looks so cool. I want to fight that thing. Yeah. But you can't focus on the one monster. You're going to get there. And part of the fun is really just enjoying the different monsters, how they move, how they react, what they do. I mean, that's that's the fun I'm having is it doesn't matter if it's this weak little, the weakest little monster that I can carve for, for gear or if it's the end game. If you enjoy every monster as it comes, every variant as it comes, and enjoy the differences between them all, mm-hmm. like every monster is literally an adventure. I mean, not the. I mean, it's it, there's an excitement about it all because there's always something unique or different about it, and yeah. you, I don't see why you would want to bypass that because the whole point is to enjoy seeing this mute, mutation of nature, like just. To see this world, like really everything is is exaggerated and huge and giant, from the gear to the monsters to the tree, like it just everything is just huge. And there's such a vast world and detail that they put into these games. Like, why would you want to sit there and and skip all this? Exactly. I'm so stoked for when you buy Autumn and I uh, an Xbox each, and so that we can play <laughs> Monster Hunter World with you. <laughs> And anyone uh, else listening to this who wants a free Xbox and Monster Hunter World <laughs> card reavers, hand them out. <laughs> I think we're going to open a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I would love to get you guys in, in the world, but unfortunately, even I have limits on what I can spend. But... <laughs> yeah, we know where the 4000 is always going towards anyway. I can't do unboxing videos if I put spend all my grand on other people. What kind of yeah, selfish exactly. person would I be? <laughs> <laughs> but I actually think that's actually a decent good – like that's a good place for me to, I think, end is my experience. Mm-hmm. Like we've discussed everything we've learned and come forth and everything that I've I've experienced up to this point. And really the biggest takeaway is just – to enjoy the like, – that's really the biggest role of Monster Hunter World uh, – any Monster Hunter is to enjoy the road or the journey with it. Yeah. And I know this all started with – again, it's kind of funny. It goes full circle to our RPG discussion we did with Little CD and just kind of approaching the game from a different angle because Gentle was – It's a kind must. Of, it's a must. Oh, continue. I, I just want to throw that in there. No, I, no it's a must. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you... Here's the thing. If people are approaching this with, like, a wrap-it-up-in-two-weeks mentality, have fun with that. But there's so much to unpack in this game, and it's better to just approach it as, like, okay, I'm going to be playing this a year after the point in which I start it, or even long after that, too. And that's the exciting thing, too. That's what I love about Genel. Like, even though I've technically beaten the game and credits have rolled and all that stuff, there's no end to how much more I can do at this point. And so I like the fact that even if I come away from it for six months, like I did last time, I know that when I do come into the game again in the future, it's just going to be this, like, wow, like, what do I want to do this time? What do I want to clean up that I didn't maybe, or whatever the case is, or what hunts can I do multiplayer with people and, or just different weapons. Like there's always going to be something else to do. And you've got to keep that in mind when getting into this, it is worth getting into it. Even if it's striking, some people as like, Oh, it's too in depth. It's not my kind of game. It's like, it is your kind of game. You just don't realize it yet because yeah, you're not I, giving it the opportunity. And I think you're the perfect like example to even say that because you 
and I saw it, and I can see it myself too. Like gentle can be putting off putting if it's your first time into a monster. Home. Absolutely. Really? Because you, you like the tutorial guys were what was putting you off, and it kind of yeah. put me off of it too. Like for sure. But when you realize you can one skip all that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and two, like even if you wanted to go back just to wrap them up, like you don't have to do it right away and go. And you can even take what you think you know and don't know, go try it and then bring it back to the tutorial so you can get through that even quicker. And exactly. I mean, there's just. The game isn't going to hold your hand later, so appreciate when it does. Yeah. And, and every single step of the way, you're getting better. You're getting more experience, and that is just so valuable. It really is. Like, it, just, yeah, there, there's nothing more yeah, to say. Like, exactly. The game is, is, I encourage everybody to try one at least. I And if... If you're considering it, like, make Rise your first one. Yeah, exactly. And no, I, no doubt that's going to be a great game. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that will be very player-friendly for a lot of people because I remember finding Gen Alt clunky at first, and it still is in ways compared to other things. But um, for people who are going to be playing Rise as the first thing, that will be just so, so modern compared to generations ultimate in terms of how it uh, performs and all that kind of stuff so i think it'll help people who might have been put off by gen alt as like a first game like i don't think that will be an issue at all in rise because of how fluid it will obviously be oh i totally agree i i kind of fully expect rise to beat world in terms of not just sales but the number of people who play it because you're going to be getting you, you're you're already pulling in the gen old players from switch yeah to move on and then you're giving the world players their next game that's close enough in gameplay style that they're they're going to feel at home as well totally. you're giving, so it i i think it's going to be huge i really do i i i hope it's at least the same amount of content that world got and but i'm really hoping it'll be more mm-hmm Time will tell. I will hunt them. I will hunt them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think with that being said, this is a good time to, to wrap up the discussion. Yeah, totally. But uh, I'm Car Dreamer. And I'm Dace. Coming at you from Dace's house always and forever. Yep. <laughs> 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 Even when they think they've kicked me out, nope. Yeah, he's still here somehow. <laughs> yep. Even when they might call the, the, the authorities or <laughs> try to lock the door, they're just gonna come home, find me sitting there waiting like a like a lost puppy with nowhere else to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> anyway, all right. I'm Car Dreamer. I'm Dace. Thank you all for listening. It's been great. It has. Thank you. And see you all later. See ya.